Hi, welcome back to Petroleum Downstream Crash Course. Today I want to talk a little more, I just want to introduce you a little more about vis breaking or mild thermal cracking. Now, what is thermal cracking and why do we need it? Now, firstly, we know that when we distill crude oil, distill crude oil, we have what is known as long residue from the atmospheric tower. We know it is at least 30 to 50 percent of this of the barrel in terms of volume or even in weight. It's very important to maximize the value of this 30 to 50 percent. So what can we do? can send it to a vacuum tower we can extract short residue if you vacuum gas oil like vacuum gas oil from this tower correct what is this short residue can be 25% for heavy crude very heavy crudes will have about that much short residue 24-25% and that's still a lot of uh, money. What can you do with it? Because it, you can't, obviously can't put it in car. This is as good as asphalt. It's like the stuff you put on roads. So one thing you can do with this is that you dilute this very thick stuff and you sell it as shipping fuel. Short residue plus some dilute dilution you can become shipping fuel. So what do you dilute with? You can use uh, diesels or even yeah you can use diesels, gas oils and stuff like that. But you know this is expensive. So you want to minimize the amount of diesel you use to dilute your short residue to reduce its viscosity so that the shipping fuel is usable for ships. It's on spec for the ships. Just to give you an idea how thick this is, it's about 100 million sanistokes. <coughs> Excuse me. 100 million sanistokes. Water is one sanistoke. And honey is about 10,000, 1,000, it depends, yeah. But you just get the idea, this is, this is very thick stuff. And even if you put it in ships, it's a bit hard to make it run using f this kind of fuel oil. So no go, right? Okay, so how do you minimize the amount of diesel or gas oil you use to dilute this short residue? And this, this dilution, or this diluter, they just call it cutter stock in industry. How do you uh, reduce the amount of cutter stock you need to dilute short residue? Well, one thing you can do is to reduce the viscosity of short residue. Reduce viscosity as much as possible so that you can use less cutter stock to dilute it to sell a shipping fuel because this, this is expensive <coughs> and how can you reduce it? you can send it into what is known as a vis breaker This breaker is basically the breaking of viscosity. You can think of it like that. It's to reduce the viscosity of this short residue so that you can dilute with less cutter stock. And how does it do that? Well, you can think of uh, think of it like this. You have a tube of pasta. 
and you're trying to f force it through a pipe a very narrow pipe with some pasta inside what can you do to improve the flow properties? you know this pasta is long, it is thick what can you do? you can break the pasta up into smaller pieces and if I flow it through the same narrow pipe it's going to have an easier flow so this is what this breaking does on a subatomic level it's breaking down the what do you call it you can breaking down the hydrocarbon molecules into smaller pieces so that it's easier to flow and you can think of it like this like when you chew up food it's easier to swallow and likewise you get to chop it up you have to chop it up really small and bite sized so that it's easier to swallow so it's the same idea here for vis breaking and what is the process of vis breaking like? process of vis breaking like this is a mild thermal cracking process so what is this breaking like? oh yes just to clarify what cracking is cracking is basically taking large molecules and breaking it down to small molecules that's what I explained just now so hope there's no confusion yep so cracking to crack molecules is to break it up and make it smaller and and how would we do that? I liken it to cooking so you have some oil here you heat it up and you cook it to break it down just like you put raw food you cook it into something desirable so you have raw oil unvis broken and you heat it up a while and you have cooked I quote cooked so called cooked oil and you want it just nice you don't want to overcook it and you don't want to undercook it so this is vis broken oil or this broken residue that's suitable for less cutter stock to be able to blend in and of course just like cooking you can overcook and what happens when you overcook food and you burn your food it forms this yucky thing down there it forms this char and people usually call this stuff coke so this is overcooked and well in industry they'll just say this is over cracked all right over cracked food it's just over cracked food <laughs> over cracked oil is just oil that has gone through too much cracking such that most of a lot of the mass has just become carbon or coke and how likely is it able to form carbon if you see your assay you see this thing called CCR or Conradson carbon residue so what they do in this Conradson carbon residue test is maybe take 100 grams of oil they purposely overcook it until like nothing's left you have some set amount of mass of carbon left in there after you burn your oil too much and the amount of carbon left that will be a measure of the cook tending form cook uh, forming tendencies of the oil so that's how they do the Conradson carbon residue test and this number will be something like the Conradson carbon residue and that's what they do in your essay so 
the higher the number, the more likely it is to form coke. So this is what cracking is about. So in th severe thermal cracking, you'll have the overcooking process too much, and in mild thermal cracking, you just have a slight cooking of the oil. So that's about it, just about it for the vis breaking concepts. And in the next video, I can tell you more about the actual vis breaking unit. Thanks for watching.